Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Today, we're here to explore an exciting and thought-provoking topic that will, be that will be expressed throughout this unit. We shall start in September and uh, September the 3rd and end on October the 19th. Okay, to begin with, I'd like to start by illustrating the uh, unit title and the key concept, related concepts, global context, and the statement of inquiry. Um, what's going to be discussed today briefly is what is the purpose of this unit? So the unit title is called Rights to Passage. It is similar in your book. Uh, if you've purchased the Perspectives Grade 8 book, you'll find that the first unit is called Rights to Passage. And you can also access this on Savas. Uh, the key concept for the unit uh, includes perspectives. We will investigate and explore diverse, pers diverse texts where perhaps the characters, perspective, or uh, changes throughout an experience or a specific setting, which as you can see, I've related it directly to our related concepts, character, and settings. Moreover, not only will they change their perspectives, but also their personal and cultural expressions. It all depends on what the characters experience throughout the text, and we shall explore this in depth as we read the different texts evident in your book. Moreover, the statement of inquiry focuses on what is the main question or what is the main statement that we want to deduce at the end of the unit. And it states here that setting rituals and cultural backgrounds may contribute in the development of one's personality and perspective. Now, after we really reread the um, texts in details, you might come up with a different uh, statement of inquiry indicating that they may not, they probably will not contribute. It depends on the text and obviously your perspective as a reader and as a learner, expressing your perspective in terms of the text and your point of view of whether the character is truly affected by setting or uh, cultural expressions and engagements. Uh, not only are we covering uh, the key concept related concepts, global context and statement of inquiry, we're also going to focus on two ATL skills. And these two ATL skills are essential because it enhances your learning process and it enables you to create a final non-fictional narrative, which will be your assessment. So the ATL school category includes communication and thinking, and the cluster for communication is communication school. So we're going to communicate, listen to different perspectives, and even write for different purposes. So you may be asked to write a biography or a diary entry. So there are more than one purpose for why you're writing, and we're going to discuss this in details when we begin, we begin with the grasp goals of each and every writing style. Thinking, creative thinking, create original works and ideas. At the end, you will create your own non-fictional narrative, expressing your own ideas and, and illustrating your creativity throughout the context within. So just a quick recap of what we're going to do and where you're go what book are we using? This is the book that we're going to use. It's called My Perspective, English Language Arts, Grade 8. The content that shall be covered within this unit includes the following: Red Roses and the Medicine Bag, Media, Apache's Girl Rite of Passage, Letter, You Are the Electric Boogaloo and Just Be Yourself, Poetry, Hanging Fire, Translating. Grandfather's house. Now, in English literature and language, there is an aspect of language that shall be also covered, which includes the following vocabulary, grammar, and writing errors. In the vocabulary aspect, we will discuss uh, new terminologies and words that are evident within the unit. And obviously, you shall have to use these vocabulary words throughout your writing when you produce your final product. You're going to use context clues, multiple meaning words, and you're going to infer the meaning of words that are evident in the context itself. In other words, infer means that you're going to deduce the meaning of the word based on its contextual meaning. Grammar includes the following, active and passive voice, run on sentences, conjunctions, pronoun, antecedent agreement, common root, 
prefixes, and suffixes. You shall also find extra resources for the grammar in the uh, main page, in addition to the main page, the unit resource page. So I highly advise that everyone uh, takes a look at them every now and then. In addition, I shall assign assignments as a form of formative assessment uh, to assess your grammar and writing itself. Writing includes the following sentence fragments. We're going to discuss what sentence fragments are and how to uh, refrain from using or using these errors in writing. Using punctuation correctly, semicolon, columns, and parentheses. You will also find that I've added on the resource page the use of commas. I shall also illustrate this within because this is probably one of many of students' concerns of how can I use a, uh, commas, when do you apply a full stop, etc. Transition words and phrases. This is very important. Not only do I want you just to use transition words such as moreover, for instance, to add, uh, furthermore, on the other hand, consequently, I want you also to understand when to use them appropriately within the context. And a video has been already uploaded on the resource page for the unit in regards to how to use appropriate transition words. Using punctuation correctly goes under the scope of using all the punctuation marks correctly, full stop, question mark, explanation marks, um, apostrophes, etc. And as you can see, this all builds up to your assessment. So ultimately, you will probably need to use the effective and proper uh, terms and vocabs that are reflective to the unit. You will also need to use the appropriate vocabulary, uh, grammar, syntax, and structure of the sentence. And in writing, you won't be using fragments, uh, comma splices, etc. Now, for the TSR, this is the general TSR, but uh, the Specific TSR will be is already posted on your unit page under the image of rubric. So when you find the unit project, click on the image of rubric and you will download the TSR in details that explains when will you get a one to two and how will you get a seven to eight, the steps precisely. But I shall discuss them currently generally for criterion B. It is organization. You must employ an organizational structure that serves the context and intention. So if you're writing a biography, I shouldn't see the elements of a letter. Organize opinions and ideas in a logical manner. Your ideas should build up in a cohesive and coherent manner. If you're writing a biography, I shouldn't find that you start with the issue and then you start, then you conclude to the conclusion of the resolution of that issue and your achievements, et cetera. They should be in a consistent, coherent manner. Your introduction, lifestyle, um, achievements, uh, problems or events that you faced, conclusion, reflecting on the issues and how they were resolved. Criterion C, producing text. This is the part where you put most of your effort in. How are you going to make sure that the text you're writing is engaging and effective? Uh, the first strand includes that you're going to produce text that demonstrates thought and imagination while exploring new perspectives and ideas arising from personal engagement with the creative process. Uh, as you're writing a non-fictional narrative, you will need to reflect your perspective and ideas effectively, and I should be able to identify them as a reader. Um, in addition, I should see your personal engagement in terms of your writing style and building up of events, uh, lessons learned, and so the second, the second strand states that you should make stylistic choices in terms of linguistic, literary, and visual devices, demonstrating awareness of impact on the audience. As you're writing, keep in mind, someone else is going to read this. So rather than just listing a block of things that you've achieved or done, I should see a detailed or let's say your own touch in terms of language. Perhaps you're going to use imagery to describe a specific situation, a metaphor, a simile, Irony, perhaps, if you're writing a letter. So all of these elements are essential in writing because it ensures that the message is transferred in a specific way towards your audience. Even tone and mood is effective in this uh, strand. Um, if it's some, if it's a sad experience that you've went through, I should find more pessimistic words. Or if it's an optimistic experience, then the visual, uh, the, the image that you're trying to transcend to your readers should represent an optimistic point of view. Select relevant details and examples to support ideas. 
Here, you need to provide examples and explanations of the events, lessons, problems uh, that you're trying to illustrate throughout the context in details. I should see an example and an explanation that is directly related to the example. This will be discussed later on in details, and we shall write in the form of peel, which is point, example, explain, and link. And finally, criterion D is using language. So everything you've learned in terms of the vocabulary words, uh, the appropriate register and style in terms of grammar, syntax, and punctuation, and your ability to spell and write the words correctly that you've learned throughout the unit will be assessed in this strand. So as you can see, the first strand uh, states that you should use appropriate and varied vocabulary, sentence structures, and forms of expressions. The second strand, you must write and speak in an appropriate register and style. So if you're writing a biography, it should be very formal. Uh, the third strand includes use correct grammar, syntax, and punctuation. I do not want to see words such as I, I wanna, I'm gonna, et cetera. These are not allowed. Syntax includes how you're going to build up your sentences, a subject, and then a verb, and then object, et cetera. Uh, you must spell and write and pronounce with accuracy. So if a new word and you apply the new word that you've learned throughout the unit, but it's spelled incorrectly, I cannot mark you up on the word, although you try to use this word. So make sure that the words that you learn and when you're writing minimal errors in terms of how you spell the word and how uh, you build up your sentence in general. All right. Moreover, I want to conclude with wishing you all the best. In terms of resources and any, any other questions, where can I find the resource? You will find them on the main page. This is a general resource that includes all the units. Uh, you probably find some resources on the main page that you will not be using for this unit. So please refer to the unit resources that have been directly related to the unit itself. So unit one resources, and I wish you all the best and good luck.